I'm gonna show you how you can make EV Next look like cycles. First, the render settings. In the shadow section, increase the rays to 4, the steps to 9, and enable volume shadows. Then enable ray tracing and toggle it open. For the resolution, lower numbers are better, but they take longer to render. So be careful when tweaking it. I, for example, found 2 to 1 to be enough for me. Then increase the mix roughness to 0.5, as well as increasing the precision in the screen tracing section to 1. Afterwards, toggle open the fast GI approximation section and set the rays to 8, steps to 12, and once again, increase the precision to 1. If if you're using volumetrics, you'll also want to go to the volume section and use the highest resolution and most steps your computer can handle, as well as making sure the start and end values in the custom range section are as close together as possible without clipping away any of the volumes. Now, since the global illumination is only based on screen space, it's a good idea to use a bit of overscan in the film section. 20 to 40% gave me really good results, but the more overscan you use, the slower the render gets. So again, you'll have to sort of choose between more quality and speed. And that should be it for the render settings. But before we move on, let's quickly talk about performance. If this is too slow, the first thing I would tweak is the resolution of the screen tracing, fast GI and volume, because in my opinion, those have the least noticeable effect on quality. If that still isn't fast enough, you can also decrease the rays and steps in the shadow and fast GI approximation sections, but in my opinion, that's quite a bit more detrimental to the fidelity. Next, let's tweak the materials. Firstly, when switching from cycles to EV, you may have to adjust the strength of the displacement and bump of your materials, as something that seemed perfectly reasonable in cycles can appear way too strong in EV. But something that works great in both cycles and EV is my film emulation node group because I find it always pushes my renders that last few percentage points. So if you're interested, check it out. Link in description. But now for glass materials, you'll want to replace your regular glass shader with this setup here. Go into the material options and enable transparent shadows as well as ray trace transmission. Then for the thickness setting, you'll want to choose sphere for more spherical objects and slab for flatter objects. This setup is great because it can even create some caustics ish. Now, the last thing we have to cover is lighting and better reflections. First, if you have an HDRI or some type of world lighting, you'll have to disable it for everything except the camera, because else it will just wash out the scene with way too much light. To do that, go into the shading tab, into the world shader and add a light path as well as a mix shader node. Then plug the previous world lighting into the bottom socket of the mix shader node and the is camera ray output of the light path node into the factor. Then once you view the output, the world lighting won't affect any of the objects in the scene. Lastly, just replace the lighting of the HDRI with regular lights. Now, if you have some weird lighting artifacts like this, you can fix them by going to the lights settings and either decreasing the resolution limit or increasing the filter value. The resolution limit is the preferred method here because it's just way more accurate. I've also seen some people enable jitter and increasing the overblur, but honestly, I don't see any difference when doing so. I also found that I sometimes had to tweak the strength of certain lights to match the look cycles had. In this scene, for example, I had to increase the brightness of the sun quite a bit. And speaking of, EV tends to be a little bit darker than cycles in general, so you might also have to increase the exposure a bit. All the new EV ray tracing features are really awesome, but they still have the limitation of being completely based on screen space. So sometimes it can still be necessary to use a radiance and reflection volumes. To do so, add a light probe, volume, and scale it to cover the areas that need to receive light that's not visible to the camera. Then in the irradiance volume settings, you can tweak all sorts of things, but the most important is the resolution. Although sometimes the intensity may also have to be tweaked to get closer to the cycle's look. If you're covering a larger area, you can also use multiple irradiance volumes with varying resolutions. Just don't forget to bake every single one of them. With reflections, on the other hand, there's no need to bake. So you can just add a reflection cube map and it should work. There are two types of cube map, sphere and plane. In my test, the planes were kind of weird though, so I don't recommend you use them. For the sphere type, however, you again just have to scale it to fit over the surfaces that need to receive reflections from objects that aren't visible to the camera. By the way, you can also switch the cube map type to box, which can be a little better in some situations. But that's it. Your EV render should now look pretty similar to Cycles. I mean, it definitely has gotten a lot easier with EV Next. But yeah, if this video helped you at all, then please check out this video next or subscribe.